Alright, hey guys, what's up? It's Brian from PC Box Studio and SharpEdit.com. But before we get started on to the chapter 6, um, I wanted to cover a few things in Cinema 4D that um, I want to express about um, how I learned it. So, there's a site called GrayscaleGorilla.com. In my opinion, it is the video co-pilot for Cinema 4D. So yeah, that's pretty much how my opinion is. Um, it's really great. Um, it's great tutorials for Cinema 4D and Nick, the guy who produces everything, he is just awesome. He's very explain. He explains himself very well. And uh, before my vo voice goes out, I'm gonna drink some water. But um, yeah, he's very uh, descriptive and informative about his videos. So um, be sure to check him out before you. Uh, try to really learn the Cinema 4D, but for now, I'm going to show you guys um, his Grayscale Gorilla Light Kit Pro Pack that I used on um, UF Cessation. I didn't use the default lighting in um, Cinema. I kind of like this one better. It gave a more realistic reflection glow to it. So, a few little things before we uh, actually start doing something in Cinema 4D. I'm going to show you the basic setup of what I actually did to make all my 3D renders. So, the first thing you want to do is go to render settings or you can click on this little button up here. Go to output. Set this film and video to HDV 720p 30 frames a second and click OK or view. Now we're back here. We're going to add just a text. We're MoGraph MoTeX and I'm just going to type something. Get it? I actually did type something. So I, I typed something there and um, we're going to the. We want to center this, so we're going to set the origin to the middle, and I'm just going to extrude it out a bit. But um, if you guys want to know how I'm moving around, if you press Alt on your keyboard and hold it down and move your mouse around, you can get these. Uh, rotation is the left mouse button. Middle mouse button is panning left, right, up, down, and right mouse button is moving forward. Be sure to press Alt when you're using these keys. So that's that. Now, if we click render, we got this going on. Pretty cool. Nothing going on. Bad shadowing. But anyways, we're next we're going to add we're going to take away the default light. As you can see, the light is pretty bad. So we're going to go to render settings or click on this button here. Go to options and turn off the default light. That's going to get rid of the default light and ta-da, nothing happened. Now, this is when Grayscale Gorilla um this guy right here Grayscale Gorilla. He produced this pack called um, Grayscale Gorilla Light Kit Pro, and I use the HDR Sky. And basically, if you use that, you can control the shadowing, the brightness, whatever. But we can do this with a sky object. Clicking on this little light and go sky object, and we're going to go to materials, double click, and you bring up a new material. Now, click on the material and open it up turn off the color, turn off the specular, add luminance, okay? Next, go to texture, load texture or image, and we're going to load an HDR image. Okay, so these are the Grayscale Gorilla HDRI HDR images. What this is, it's a, um, basically, it's an image that can be used in a circle object, like if you wrapped it around a circle, it would fit perfectly. It would be seamless, right? So as you can see, this it would be seamless. It would wrap around a perfect circle. Perfectly, around a circle, perfectly, yes. Um, we're going to load these HDR, not JPEGs. So we're going to load the HDRs. And do you want to copy it to the location? Nero do not. And it's going to load it up and apparently... No! Not transparency. I said luminance. Why Why did I do that? So we're going to load up the luminance and we're going to load the image. Alright, so we're going to load the HDR. No! And there we go. Looking good. Looking good. And that's it. We're going to take the material and drop it on the sky object. And as you can see, it's a actually a full circle. And if we click render, it's going to render black because we need to add global illumination. So click on this guy here. 
we're going to go to effect and add global illumination. This is going to add, just leave all the settings alone for now. This is just going to make the render look so much better. See? See that? Anyways, that's that. But let's say we not, we're not using the sky object. That's just if you don't have the pack. Um, one more thing I forgot. Just make sure the sky is invisible. So how do we do that? Because we don't want to render this ugly sky object. Um, just click on the sky, right click Cinema 4D compositing tag. Click on that tag right there. Just double click on it, bring it open. And then scene by camera, just delete it. But everything renders accordingly to the um, HDR but not the um, the back you won't see it so it should be pink yeah because we have pink back there so the, the, it's like basically they're like lights in an image okay so let's say for example we don't we don't want to use the sky we're using grayscale gorillas pack we're just gonna double click on it it's gonna load up this thing here which is basically the sky object see but um, we're gonna click HDR sky click on controls and we're gonna load the same thing load that HDR it does the same thing see but um, it gives you more control of the brightness um, set it back to 100 and um, it, it lets you do a lot of things and we're just gonna uncheck the scene by camera so it does that automatic oops um, it does that automatically for us so I'm just gonna delete my sky for now and if we click render, that's pretty much how that works. So this is the basic lighting setup. As you can see, the shadows look so great together. The shadowing is just awesome. Um, another thing I did is um, I went to the render settings and I added an ambient occlusion. Set the maximum ray length to 5 and accuracy set it to something like 75. And that's just going to add some nice more shadowing in there. So you see it gets a little darker and it looks so great. So that is the basic setup of how I use Cinema 4D for almost all of my renders and projects. So keep this in mind. It's um, it's a great pack to get. Um, Grayscalegrill.com. Great tutorials. Um, you learn a lot. And that's where I learned pretty much all my Cinema 4D um, stuff. So this again, this wasn't really a tutorial. This is just um, how I set up my scenes. Again, I'll be moving a little faster in the future, assuming you have watched this tutorial, okay? So, because I don't want to cover everything. It's just too much. I'm only limited to, like, 15 minutes per YouTube video. So, um, that's that's how I do my Cinema 4D renders. And um, to render, you're just going to click on here and go to Output, and we're going to set it to All Frames. So it's going to render frame 0 to 90. If you want to increase the frames, just set it to like 300 and it'll be 300. So our timeline is 300 frames now. See, we have 300 frames. This is the current frame indicator. This is the end frame, beginning frame. Okay. This is just adjust how much frames you see. I'm just limited to my screen space. Again, you can see we can get more control over how much frames we see. 70 or 300 but um that's this is pretty much how I render and work in Cinema 4D and you're just gonna click this little button here this guy and just save it to like the desktop or something save it to the desktop test or something test and that's pretty much it um yeah uh, that's rendering. You're just going to click render. And it's just going to render all the frames, see? Again, this is global illumination, so it's going to take some time to render. But, um, I'll cover rendering again in later in the future, because um, I'm going to go over it a little more, because there's a lot to do in rendering. But anyways, thanks again for watching. Uh, be sure to tell your friends, subscribe, and um, stay tuned for more t great tutorials and chapter videos. Bye guys. Bye.